Welcome to the Donkey and the Bee podcast with your hosts, Brett and Laura Schottkavis, where we are bringing you everything to do with marriage, entrepreneurship, and finance. And today, we're kind of encapsulating all of those with our discussion, and we're talking about how to get on the same page with your spouse. Money mindset is the topic. How to grow your money mindset together as a couple and set yourself up for financial success. I'm super excited about this topic because I think it's something that isn't talked about very often, and I think can kind of fester in a marriage because it's an uncomfortable topic to talk about. So I am very excited to talk about our story, how we got started, and pretty much explain that, you know, we were two average ordinary people in college, starting with no money, and kind of worked our way up from there. So we're excited to tell you how we grow, how we grew together, and um, let's just get this uh, this party started, huh? Let's get it started. <laughs> All right, fantastic. So we got married younger, right? We were in college, and um, we were waiting tables. We really had no money mindset at that point. Um, we were just making money just to spend money. We, we stumbled into getting a loan and buying our first house. We were uh, very young, no kids yet, and didn't really have a plan for, for finances. We didn't really have much of a money conversation at that time. But that was going to change shortly thereafter, and it really set the foundation for our future. So that's why I'm really excited to break this down. So why don't you start off, Laura? What, uh, how did we get started, and what was that like for us? Yeah, so I think we both grew up in, you know, you, you worked hard for your money, right? You got the job with the pension, and, you know, you had the retirement, and that's what you should do. There was no other option. And so I think we both had that mindset toward a job and toward gaining finances for our family. So we pursued the government jobs and, you know, Brett was going to be a firefighter. Uh, I was working for a city in Southern California and I hated my job. He hated what he was doing. And it was just like, why are we doing this? Like, why, why would we work 40 years, you know, in the jobs that we hate just to get the retirement and pension? And so I think we kind of had that vibe. We had that feeling of like, maybe this isn't what we want. Um, and so he's the one who kind of branched off and like really catapulted our money mindset and then kind of like encouraged me, nudged me along. Uh, so he can kind of describe exactly how he came across this book that kind of just catapulted our success. Yeah, that's spot on. So we were in this spot, you know, we were, we were young, we were struggling, we were barely making any money and really saving nothing. Um, and we were open though. We were open to ideas. We knew we wanted more. We knew there was more out there and we just didn't know what we could do and how to do it. But nonetheless, we still were ready for an opportunity. And I think that we were trucking along, doing our normal, normal jobs and, and, and not really saving, but we're waiting for an opportunity. And I think that's important to recognize because everybody in life will have multiple opportunities in their life. And I'll share kind of how we got on the same page and jumped on a couple of these opportunities that really set the foundation for our financial success. So we're, we're doing our thing. We're waiting tables. Um, we are just having our first child. And then I was recommended a book. And this book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki, this book changed our lives. So I read this book and you know, if you don't really know about it, it, it was the foundation for myself and for so many young people or, or any people that want to get out of the rat race. And it kind of painted this picture in this analogy of this rich dad and this poor dad and how the world is set up in this kind of cycle, this vicious cycle of this rat race. And we knew first and foremost that we were in this rat race. We knew we were trapped. We, we had seen and were pursuing people uh, and dreams about getting some government job with pensions, and we knew we were gonna grind through the next 30 years and hate our life just so that we could retire. And I was like, that ah, there's gotta be something different. And so this book opened my eyes so that it pulled back the veil on the system and, and kind of showed us another way. So uh, I read this book in just a couple days and it was just so amped. I was juiced and just like, I came to Laura and I said, babe, I, I read this book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. It has opened my eyes to what is there, to what the possibilities are, and I, I really want you to read this book, and I think you need to read this book, and we need to talk about it. We need to figure out what, how we can implement some of these things. So I gave it to Laura. Why don't you take it off here? Yeah, so then, so what I did next was, oh, I realized he's really excited about this book. I should probably read it. 
<laughs> instead of having, you know, a, a negative approach to it of like, oh, I don't want to read this book. Like, rah, rah, rah. no, I had the approach of like, hey, like this seems really important to him. And so I'm going to step out, even though I don't really want to read it, but uh, I, I'm going to read it because it's important to him. And so I think that's super important within the marriage to have that supportive uh, mentality toward different avenues in, within your relationship, right? And so read the book and I, I would say I wasn't amped. I was, I was excited, I think, because, you know, Brett has that, that finance mindset. Uh, I was definitely ready for a change within, you know, our life as far as working, right? Like I was working three jobs, he was working two, and it was just out of the point where it was like, ah, we can't do this anymore. And so really wanted the change, saw that it could happen through the book and really just kind of just jumped in like feet first, both of us. So uh, I think at that point is where we sat down and got like our goals together, right? Like, okay, if we're going to do this, like how are we going to do it? What's the time frame? What, do we, what kind of action items or action steps are we going to take to do this? Yeah, we did that. And I think that's a really important thing for couples to do to get on the same page with what are your short term, your your medium term and your long term goals. Because really to hit these goals, there's gonna be a lot of self sacrifice. So we came together and we said, all right, here's what we wanna do, right? We wanna buy real estate, we want to uh, have passive income, we wanna retire by the time we're 40, we, we wanna do these things and it's not gonna come easy. So here are some of the things that we need to sacrifice, here are some of the things that we need to do. And we had that conversation and we talked about budgeting, we talked about saving, we talked about uh, learning and continue to, to grow our, our money mindset and uh, how to invest. We, I mean, literally we were waiting tables and, and didn't know anything about any, any of these kind of things, real estate or investing or, or, or cash flow or anything like that, right? But we made a commitment like, hey, this is important to our future and this is what we wanna do together. We wanna build something together. And so this was uh, in a, a period we were we were just had our first baby and we had purchased our first house maybe a year prior to that and we were fixing up our house and uh, literally we were waiting tables and working other jobs and had very very limited budget and we had a about a five hundred dollar a month budget to pay for materials and her and I Laura and I would do all the work ourselves literally like figuring out how to run electrical. Uh, putting in can lights. We tiled our master bathroom shower together and um, literally first time and then screwed it up and had to demo it and pull it all back out and then start again. And we were just asking friends and everybody, hey, how do you do construction? Because I can't afford to pay any l real contractors to do this stuff. Mm. But this was our, our our journey. This was our mindset. And we were just just getting started, right? And I think this is important for people who are are just getting started, who are younger, to know that like it's it is not easy and it's not free and it's a grind, but you know, we really enjoyed that time of our lives because we were doing it together. We made a commitment to go after these goals and these dreams together. And we were fighting through the hard times together, which made it actually kind of fun, which made it uh, really worthwhile. And I think it's so important when you're at that stage um, or any stage in a relationship, in a marriage that you can set aside the time and the conversations to say, here's what's important to me here's what's important to you. But a third thing is here's what's important to us together and, and write out those goals and, and pursue them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, that I think was what really catapulted our relationship because we had the same mindset toward self-development and growth. And so that reading that book, not only, you know, opened our mindset toward money, but I think it also um, created an environment for us to grow together. And I think that a lot of times in relationships that doesn't happen, right? Like you have one person who's really going after the self-development and is like trying to pull their partner along, like, come on, this is awesome. Like, let's do this together. And a lot of times the other partner isn't on that same path. And then it just kind of goes like this, right? Slowly throughout the years. Uh, and so, you know, we didn't want that. We wanted to be on the same page and we wanted to grow together. And so I think that's where it really took us, right? Like writing those goals out, talking about them daily, Right. Um, just kind of put us on that path where we were just we were going like this together instead of separate. You know? Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. So we're going through we're, we're young. We're, we're fixing up our first house. And um, and we I, I came across this. Maybe it was a, a, a book or something on YouTube, but it, it was talking about the power of compound interest. And I watched this video 
and then I did the activity. If you've never done this, go and look up a compound interest calculator and start throwing in some numbers. And we made very little money at the time. So I put in like $150 a month at 10% at interest and I put in on my age and I was like, okay, if we'll retire at 65, boom, let's spit this out, right? And, and all of a sudden I'm like, oh my gosh, like it was hundreds of thousands of dollars. And I was mind blown and I'm like, whoa, there is a lot of power here in investing and letting this go for the long term. And I'm like, well, okay, well, that's $150 a month. What, what happens when we make more money? What happens if I put in $400 or $500 a month? And I was like, oh my gosh. Like I, I came with a lore. I'm like, babe, look at this. Like if we just save $400 a month, by the time we already retire, we're going to have like a million plus dollars. Like, oh my gosh, we're going to be millionaires, right? Like, and this was the seed, the seed of our money mindset. Like before that, we had never considered the possibility that we could be multimillionaires. It was just so far from, from what we were doing. We were trying to get a government job and have a pension and hopefully grind for 35 years and maybe get 90% of our, our highest salary and retire and then, you know, you do the RV thing or whatever else the quote unquote American dream is, right? But it was never like, hey, let's become multimillionaires before we're 40 and choose whether we want to continue to work or not. And and then this set that foundation, it would set this like flame and it was tiny, but it was a flame in my mind. And it was like just this this thing that was just working and growing. And like, I think when I put this in the calculator... I was starting to believe, right? I was starting to believe that I could do this and we can achieve this. But when I saw the numbers and I saw how just a few hundred dollars a month over a long period of time when you invest in something can grow, man, it took it from belief to like a, a, a whole solid, like I can do this. Like I know for certain lore that we can do this. And it was just a spark, like something flipped in my brain and was like, we have to do this. Our future is worth it. Our babies are young right now and we can set ourselves up and I want to retire early. Let's travel and let's do all these goals, right? So we, I came back to Laura. I'm like, babe, look, look at, look at what, look at, look at the calculator here. Look what we can do. What, how, how are we going to do this? And we had another meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I was a little bit like dragging my feet to be completely honest because reading Rich Dad Poor Dad was hard for me initially because the the title itself kind of uh, kind of run me the wrong way. I, I it made it seem. Um, like it was glorifying wealth and like kind of like putting down like the, you know, the quote unquote poor dad. And so I kind of had like a, a negative mindset toward it already. And so, but when he confronted me about this whole compound interest thing, and when he said multimillionaire, I think that was really hard for me to swallow as well, because I wasn't grown up in that type of environment and neither was Brett, but I think I had a negative association in my mind with wealth. You know, if people who have a lot of wealth, oh, they must have got it from doing bad things or from lying and cheating and stealing. You know, it's like the whole Robin Hood thing, right? Uh, but uh, so I think that I had to change my mindset toward toward wealth as, hey, when we get this wealth, look how many people we can help. You know, so I think it was a reframing, I think, in my mind toward money and toward building wealth and, you know, getting the assets. And so uh, when Brett came, <laughs> came with with this whole compound interest calculator, I'm like, what is this thing? And then uh, kind of breaking it down for me, I think it was kind of same similar thing. My mind was blown. I believed it, but I still was a little hesitant toward it. Like, do I really want that? Is that something that is really going to be available to us? Like we're just two young kids really who have kids and like have normal jobs. And so it kind of was a I didn't believe it was quite yet for me. It was for somebody else, but maybe not for me. And so I think uh, Brett kind of helped kind of push me up out of that, like get my feet out of the ground and stop dragging my feet uh, and, and kind of a belief in both our minds that, hey, like we can do this. We can achieve this. Yeah. And I think the most important part is we were able to come together and have some of these unofficial money meetings. And we sat down and we're like, hey, uh, this is important to me. This is important to you. This is important to our family and, and our children and what we want to do. And honestly, we really, really hated our jobs. And we were so excited for the opportunity or the, the thought of quitting our jobs and saying, you know, hey, the man, we are out. We're going to do our own thing. So we had been primed. We were waiting in, uh, for an opportunity. And when we we saw these things and, and I, we really believed that it was possible, then it was like, okay, Let's take some action. Like let, let's set some ground rules for what we want to do. So we had budget meetings and we we use this term, we 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 went broke. We go broke. 
right? And we still go broke, right? And, and that really means that regardless of how much money we make, we're acting like we're broke. We are spending very little amounts of money and we're very, very frivolous. And we did that for years, but we set the groundwork for that in this time in our story. And we said, hey, we're gonna go broke. We're gonna save as much as we can and we're gonna put it into a savings account. Not to sit there, but we're gonna take this rich dad, a poor dad um, approach and we're gonna save to buy assets. We're gonna save to, to, to make cash flow and then slowly start to increase that, replace our income and then retire early. So during this stage, we were we had finished renovating the house that we bought, right? We had our $500 a month budget and we did all the work ourselves and it took us two, maybe two plus years to go through the whole house and uh, renovate it. And we bought this house in 2011. So it was uh, right around 2014. We'd owned it about three years and the market had drastically appreciated. We said to ourselves, I think it's time. Like mm -hmm. we are ready. We believe in ourselves. We are ready to, to say, you know, see ya to the man and quit all of our jobs. Laura had three, I had two. And it was like, okay, are, are we gonna do this? And then, so we put our house on the sale for market. We, we, we sold our house. We had um, an, enough equity after selling that we could not work for about a year. So we sold our house. We had our second child at the exact same time and we quit all of our jobs. And then we just said, we are burning the boats. We are going all in. I don't know how we're gonna do this, but we're going to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And I think that is really kind of the path of success, to be honest, is like you got to just kind of give yourself no plan B and just jump in. And uh, we definitely did that. And it was a little stressful, to be completely honest. Um, you know, we, d we decided to start flipping homes at that point, And we were waiting for the first deal to come in. And, and like, I mean, it was a month or two and it was a little, it was a little stressful. But um, I think because we had the same mindset, we knew that we were committed to this and that we were, uh, I think we didn't give ourselves an option to fail. I think that was kind of a thing that really helped us as well. It's like, we're going to make this successful and we're going to succeed. And you know what? It's going to suck really hard on some of these days. Um, but, you know, we're in this together. And that's the thing. We always had each other's back. And I think that's really um, the foundation of, of our marriage. And so I think that, man, that is what helped us through this whole struggle. Cause it was a struggle very much so. Yeah. So I, I credit this time in our lives, in our marriage as really the foundation for everything that we have now. And, um, you know, we thinking to kind of wrap up that story, you know, we, we sold the, our house, we quit our jobs and we just failed over and over again until we bought our first flip. And, and then we learned, we learned. And over, over the next seven years prior to that, we grew our business and we flipped about 250 houses. And we really took this model of going broke and we, we spent very little money for, for many, many years and saved as much as we could and then just continued to reinvest that money into assets, into cash flow, into rental properties. And I think that, that this was the best decision or one of the best decisions we have together because really we got on the same page and it allowed for so much um, financial stress to, to come out of the marriage. And, and not initially, the first few years were very, very hard, but it put us in a place where we were able to use that compound interest. We were able to grow our wealth and um, buy properties that continued to appreciate in value and continued to make more and more cash flow. And it really set us up on the beginning of our journey for financial freedom. Mm -hmm. For me, like I said, I was the one a little like dragging my feet a little bit. And I think there's this kind of uh, cultural quote unquote norm nowadays that like the wife is the one that's home spending all the money and shopping. You know, the husband is grinding and working hard and he's the one making all the financial decisions for the family. And yes, that might be true for some families. Right. Um, but for me, I, I didn't, I didn't necessarily need all that stuff. Right. I, I had the mindset of like, I'm going to work hard now. I'm going to sacrifice now by not buying the purses and the clothes and the cars and whatever else. Right. To impress people who you don't even know, which doesn't even make sense. Um, I, I don't need that now. Um, I'm, I'm going to take this money and we're going to put it away and we're going to act like we don't have it right until it gets to a certain point that we could purchase properties. And so that was the, the mindset. And, and 
and it was hard because you have all your other friends who are going on these trips and like buying these lavish homes and like you know the cars and whatnot and you know we had a we had dumpy cars and like lived in like a normal house and and, and it was okay to, for us uh, I think it was we didn't need to impress everyone around us uh, to feel I guess fulfilled uh, our our mindset was we want to build this for our children and for our kids. And so knowing that like when we get old and we pass away, you know, that we have something to pass on to our kids. So that was what was super important to us. Yeah. So I think as an application point, anyone who has not had that money conversation with their significant other, with the people in the relationships, uh, I would encourage you to do it. I think you need to get on the same page. You should ask three questions, right? What are the goals for myself? What are the goals for my partner? And what are our common goals together? And I would set those up and agree on them and say, you know, I may have goals that, that Laura is like, oh, I don't know about that goal, Brett, but I think we need to come together and, and really as a couple set those three categories of goals. And then from there, say, here are my action items that I'm going to do. I'm going to cut expenses. I'm going to save for investing or saving with a purpose. And, and here are some of the things that we're not going to do. And I think those budget conversations are a good conversation to have, you know, every six months or so and get on the same page. And we've done it over the last uh, 17 years, having these periodic conversations about our goals, about our dreams, about money and where our budget's at, what we want to spend and what we don't want to spend. Mm -hmm. So this is pretty much the whole purpose of the show is right. We're, we're opening up our our marriage, our our businesses, uh, everything about our finances to pretty much help anybody who needs it. That's really what it is, right? And I think, honestly, I think y'all will get a lot out of the show. And I'm excited for y'all to, to stick around because we've got some really good topics we're going to be discussing. Uh, there might be some tears. There might be, you know, there probably will be some laughs, I'm sure. Uh, but we're just here to get real, to, to open up our relationship to y'all. And, you know, hopefully you take some gold nuggets and implement them in your life and your relationships and your finances and in your business and just, you know, get to that next level. I think that's really what we get excited about is becoming a better version of our ourself tomorrow than we were yesterday, right? Like we're here to grow uh, in, our, in our mindset. We're here to develop our minds and our bodies and um, you know, grow spiritually, you know, go closer to God. And so I think that there's uh, lots of areas that uh, we're going to share that are going to be a little, a little intense sometimes, but we're, uh, we're excited to just be an open book for y'all. Yep. I think that's exactly right. Well, I'm so glad you came and joined us and we will see you all on the next one. Bye.